the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, who died last month in Switzerland, today begins his final journey back home and then to his final resting place. His remains arrive here in the capital in less than an hour from now for a state burial this week. But the body will be accompanied by the widow, the children and some UN officials. Nancy Emefa Jadosi has been looking at the preparations so far ahead of the state funeral on Thursday. But first, here is Information Minister designate Kojo Opon Kruma going through a list of dignitaries suspected here in Ghana and just how much world attention will be on the country. The Kofi Annan Funeral Committee, upon consultation with the family of the late UN Secretary General, announces the following activities for his final funeral and interment rites. Monday, September 10, 2018, Arrival of Mr. Annan's remains at the Accra International Airport at 4 p.m. The remains will be accompanied by his widow, children, and some United Nations officials. The remains will be received with a brief ceremony led by the Ghana Armed Forces and the President of the Republic. The remains will then be moved to the Accra International Conference Center from the airport. Tuesday, September 11, 2018, there will be filing past and paying of last respects by members of the general public at the Accra International Conference Center. This will be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And we encourage the general public to come pay their last respects to this illustrious son of Ghana. Wednesday, September 12, 2018, there will be filing past and paying of last respects by dignitaries including recognized groups, chiefs, members of parliament, and ministers of state. A detail of the time slots for each of these groups will subsequently be made available. Thursday, September 13, is the burial service and final interment. The service commences at 9 a.m. at the Accra International Conference Center. It will be attended by United Nations officials, several heads of state, diplomatic delegations, and the Ghanaian general public. It will be followed by a private burial at midday at the new military cemetery with full military honors and a 17-gun salute. Mr. Annan's personal testament requested for a simple, solemn final set of activities with no frills. And the state, while we wish to give him a befitting burial, will accommodate his wishes as well. So that is the minister going through what to expect. Now here is what to expect exactly on the day of the funeral, which is Thursday. The information minister des designates Kujo Opon Kuma again. As I speak to you, the remains have left Switzerland and uh, is en route to Accra, Ghana. We expect the remains to arrive in Ghana around 5 p.m. this evening. As I mentioned in my last briefing, the president will be at the airport to um, receive the remains of Mr. Kofi Annan. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., the gates of the conference center here will be opened for the general public to come pay their final respects, and we encourage uh, members of the public to join us to pay their final respects. On Wednesday, we expect the VIPs and other invited guests to join us to pay their final respects. And I want to go through the order for Wednesday. Members of the diplomatic corps are expected to pay their final respects at 8 a.m., members of parliament at 8.30 a.m., ministers of state at 8.50 a.m., members of the Council of State 9.30 a.m., Mfanspim Old Boys Association, 10 a.m., Chiefs and Queen Mothers, 10.30 a.m., his father's family, 11 a.m., the Akwamuhene and his delegation, 11.40 a.m., and Otumfose Tutu's delegation, which would also arrive to perform their final funeral rites. Recall he was given a traditional ranking and title Busumuru. They would also be here at noon to perform their final funeral rites. And then on Thursday, the funeral service starts at 8.30 a.m. As I speak to you, 
At midday currently, the following heads of state and dignitaries have confirmed their participation. The President of Cote d'Ivoire, the President of Namibia, the President of Liberia, the President of Ethiopia, the President of Niger and Zimbabwe, the former Kenyan Prime Minister will lead their delegation, a former head of state from Germany will lead the German delegation, Finland is sending a former head of state, Switzerland a former, a former president, Slovenia a former president, Timor a former president, Nigeria is sending one former president and another former vice president, Kenya is sending a former prime minister, Mauritius is also sending a vice prime minister, the Netherlands is sending a former queen, I'm told, the Qatar of Emir as well, as well as many other dignitaries. The final piece of information is that the main routes from the Ridge Roundabout to the uh, stadium traffic lights will be closed on the day, that is Thursday, and it's only those who have received invitations that will be allowed to access um, those routes on Thursday. The forecourt of the State House and Parliament House are available for parking for those who are uh, invited. And while we encourage the public to come in and pay their respects on um, Tuesday, we also ask that we observe and comply with all the security instructions that will be given by uh, the security officers on the day. That's the piece of information I have for you currently. If you have Information Minister Designate Kojo Opon Nkrumah there taking us through what to expect for the final funeral rite of the former UN Secretary General uh, Kofi Annan. Let's go along with Nancy Juadosi now as she looks at the preparation so far. This is just a dress rehearsal or a simulation ahead of the main event. The military, armed forces, all the stakeholders are here to dress up all to have some rehearsals ahead of this. So that is what has been happening um, here at the conference center. You see the armed men already marching. Lots of people are gathered here to ensure that um, this three-day burial would be befitting. But let's try and enter and find out how preparations um, is ongoing so far. So you see lots of these people um, standing here, the car, the ammo car is already passing by. This should tell you that the armed men or the military personnel are ready um, to put together a very beautiful and a befitting funeral um, for our departed soul. So let's enter. I'm sure that we'll see um, quite a number of things that will show how prepared we are for this. And so this is the entrance um, of the conference center. Now, what you see here is the cow's felt, and this is where the caskets of the late UN General Secretary would be placed um, ahead of the funeral. So if tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be the filing past of the body, people, the general public are being called to come and walk past this. So this is where the casket of Mr. Kofi Annan would be placed tomorrow and then on Wednesday. Before Thursday, we're going to have the burial service. So this is what this place looks like. But then let's enter the main auditorium because that is where the burial service actually is going to be taking place. Earlier when we came here, we entered, we saw the commander, um, you know, instructing, no, pass here, don't do this. This is what you're supposed to do commanding and, and instructing them um, what to do and what not to do. So if you can briefly see, I'm sure that's a, a second batch of people who are supposed to undertake some activities here. Probably the ushers um, being guided or being coached on what to do exactly on the day. So from tomorrow, it is going to be the filing passed by the general public. On Wednesday, it's going to be a filing passed by the ministers of state, by MPs, members of parliament, politicians, recognized groups. So this is how inside is going to be looking like on that particular day. But then on Thursday, Thursday is actually going to be the burial service of the late uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. So basically, this is how the auditorium looks like, all prepared and all ready to host our departed Mr. Kofi Annan. And those are visuals uh, coming from Switzerland where the body departed from a while ago. That is the body draped in the UN flag and it is on the way to this country right now. As we've heard from the Information Ministry, it is going to be received by President Kufuado at the airport in less than two hours, I must say, because the time then changed from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So we should expect that in less than two hours at the uh, airport and we will be there to bring you those live visuals. We will be connecting with our co uh, my colleagues on the ground live but right now let's go to Kumasi. Prince Apia is on the line with us to find out what's happening at the family home. Hello Prince. 
Hello, Chief. Chief. Prince, uh, we heard, we heard from the uh, uh, information minister that the family members are actually supposed to be here. Uh, so we expect that they're already here in Accra already. Have you been speaking to them? What have they been telling you and what's happening in the family home? Uh, if the, um, the family house is absolutely deserted. Nobody in the house, as I speak to you, when they're in the morning, and this afternoon we passed by the police, and there's nobody there. Yes, you see the poster of Mr. Kofianan uh, right in front of the house, but there's nobody there. All of them are in Accra, as I speak to you, to receive the police. Okay. Well, did, 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 did they tell you about what really is going to be their role uh, between today and Thursday? Um, the information we are picking up is that um, we are going to ask this, this part of the family is the, uh, the, father, the father's side. And they are going to perform some traditional rites when the body is brought um, mm. to, to arrive in the country. And they're going to perform some traditional rites. Then after that, um, the, the rest of the tradition and culture and all the process will be done by the people in Accra. So the only um, role they are going to play is going to perform some rites when the body touched down to Ghana. That is customary. That is the information I'm getting. And that, that's all I've been told they are going to do. Apart from that, they are going to take part and mm. never uh, ask anybody. He's largely been a global icon, so you per perhaps have people who may not even uh, be aware of or, or have a personal interaction with him uh, like that, even though from what the family members told you the last time, he has been, uh, you know, a chief of the Asante Hino 2432. I'm wondering, what is the mood like in the Ashanti region, in Kumasi, to be specific, where you are? Yeah, um... There's not, there's not so much um, being done here. You don't really see um, anything happening in regards to, to the funeral of um, the late um, Mr. Kofi Annan. But uh, you, you remember previously we were told that um, the funeral will be a state traditional burial um, funeral, I should say. And so what is happening now is that the family met with the... Um, committee for the funeral and they've agreed on how to go about it. So uh, basically it's going to be strictly street state buyout. The only bit of the um, funeral which is going to uh, be traditional is when the body touched down and a little a little bit of ritual uh, will be done to, to accept the body to the, to the land. Then mm. the rest will be uh, for the state and all that. But as I speak to you, you can't see anything down um, People talking about it, nothing, everybody is going mm. about the normal GG, uh, absolutely nothing to, to, to identify as. All right. Anything related to the funeral of Mr. Certainly, uh, Prince, we will be coming to you as and when. So that gives you an idea, the sort of. Uh, uh, don't, not to say, for lack of a better word, let's say the spectatorship or the focus, because the focus is going to be on this country and it's going to be from the rest of the world because he was a global icon. I'm going to take you through a few of his uh, historical dates or um, notable dates uh, throughout Mr. Kofi Annan's life uh, right now in this that I'm presenting to you at this moment. He was born in the 1938 in Kumase, Ghana, which is why, of course, there's a family home there. But of course, there is still information about his family that's supposed to be in Cape Coast, which uh, is quite sketchy at the moment. But he started working in the United Nations uh, in Switzerland in 1962. He's been doing this for quite a long time. And then uh, fast forward to 1965, he worded Titi Ala Kija, and they have two children. He has two children with this uh, woman whom he married in 1962. In 1984, he married Nani Lagagri uh, after he divorced a year earlier. Uh, Titi, whom he married in the 1960s. In 1991, his twin sister, Ifwa, died. And as of 1997, Mr. Kofi Annan became appointed as the seventh UN Secretary General, which is one of the positions that he's held and which the entire world know him 
or associate him with. In 2001, he won the Nobel Peace Prize, also a prestigious World uh, Peace Prize, and that happened in 2001. By 2006, he ended his 10-year term as the UN Secretary General. Uh, Kofi Annan is the man we're talking about, and his body is en route to this country that is expected to be accepted by or received by President Ekufwado. Our colleagues are on the ground. We'll be connecting with them live in less than one hour. We'll tell you what's happening on the ground and what the preparations are as we look forward to receiving that body. You saw the visuals from Switzerland where the body was just departing there.